Good afternoon, respected Dr. R. Kiranjan Singh, Minister of State, Ministry of External Affairs and Education, uh, Sri Shapam Nishikantji, MLA, Manipur State Assembly, uh, Professor Kausal Sarma, Dean, School of Social Sciences, uh, Sri Balban Singh Mankotiyaji, Ex MLA Jammu and Kashmir State Assembly. Sri Umesh Upadhyayji, President and Director of Media Reliance Industries Limited. And also Srimati Vanita Devi Naurimji, Commissioner of Income Tax, Government of India. Professor Kedar Singh, Dean, School of Physical Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Sri Manithoi Singh Ji, Joint Director, CBI. Government of India, and also many other dignitaries who are present here, and audience, students, and all the guests and participants who have come here to pay floral tribute to the martyrs of what we call the Anglo Manipuri War of 1891. I'm extremely happy that Manipuri students of JNU, particularly the Metis students, have organized this program. Earlier, we used to say Manipuri more frequently, but after the recent conflict, suddenly we have become Nagas, Maitais, and Pukis. So hopefully, in the coming days, coming years, the idea of Manipuri will again re-emerge from within each one of us. <clears throat> 13th August is a state holiday in Manipur to commemorate the Anglo-Manipuri War of 1891 and to remember our fallen heroes uh, in spite of realizing, as one of our announcers have also mentioned, that British Samratya, who which does not see the setting of the sun. And 1891, we all know that already Britain was all over the Asia Africa, Latin America, even to many parts of Latin America. But the Brit the, the Maitis, the Manipuris thought that in order to retain their dignity and sanctity of the kingdom called Manipur, uh, they fought the British against what the British normally do, infiltrating into the internal affairs of any kingdom that was there. It has been with the Peswas, with the Jhansis, many kingdoms of India had faced, so did Manipur faced. Very interestingly, the organizers of this program, the students, the Maitri students, have not merely made the programs for remembrance, but beyond the remembrance, what they have tried to do is we have, they have made another session to discuss on certain issues that are being faced by the state of Manipur and people of Manipur. So it is not merely the floral tribute that we are all paying today to these great martyrs, but also to think through beyond the present towards the future. And perhaps that is the whole idea that the students have organized this program. I think that is a wonderful way of engaging this day, not merely as remembering, but also thinking through, imagining a better future for the state and also for the country. So I would say a big applause to these students who have organized. <laughs> Let me also tell the chief guest of today's program, also the audience today, that Already JNU is pioneer in bringing the spirit of freedom fighters of Northeast India in the national capital. I must tell you that already there is a special center for the study of Northeast India for which I am currently the chairperson. And in my previous chairpersonship, some four years back, it was the former governor of Nagaland, <coughs> Sri P.V. Acharyaji, who started instituting a small token amount. And in terms of money, it is not big. 
but what he thought, because he was a Pranta Prasara of Sangatan in Northeast. And he's, when he met me, he said that you have to bring Northeast to the capital. And one way of doing is bring the freedom fighters of Northeast India from every state to this capital. And JNU is a site where you can begin with. So what we have done is this is much before, sir, the Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav started, much before that. We inst he instituted this uh, award called Namaste Governor Acharya Award in honor of the freedom fighters of Northeast India, in which what we do is every year we install a competition of PhD dissertations, synopsis, the best synopsis on Northeast India from different uh, disciplines. It may be from science, from environment, social science, culture, literature. And every time we make around five, name of five freedom fighters from all the eight states of Northeast India. And in their name, we select one student each. And this has been going on for every year. So I must say that JNU already started engaging with the freedom fighters of the Northeast and bringing it into the very what you call central space that is called Delhi and also what you call Jawaharlal Nehru University, the academic site of importance. We also know that, let me go back a little bit onto the history of what you call this uh, anglo manipuri War of 1891. After the Treaty of Yandabu in 1826, when British defeated the Kumbong dynasty, what you also call Awa or Awa in Manipuri name, uh, it was decided that Manipur be freed from the control of the Burmese. And we know that before that, Manipur's territory was expanding and shrinking depending on the strength of the king itself. So we went up to Mandalay in Burma, invaded up to that place. But sometimes when the Burmese strength increases, the Manipur also, Gangdari also shrinks. So we were defeated in the hands of the Burmese. For seven years it was devastated. And after which the king Gambhir Singh took the help of the British, fought the war. And I would say that bringing of the Northeast India into the fold of what you call India, the mighty king had a remarkable contribution. In fact, if you see the whole road, the cartography that you see today, the trade transactions from Mori to Kohima and even to uh, what you call Meghalaya, were all built during the time of King Gambir Singh. And you may say that he was being used by the British, but the point was he wanted to get his kingdom back. And for that, you have to go along with the British. So he tremendously worked along with the British to consolidate what you call the Northeast India of today, which British gave to India in 1947. So role of the mighty king in bringing, consolidating the entire region of the Northeast to the British India and subsequently to the Indian Dominion is something that we must remember and our political leaders must give cognizance of that. What has happened was that after 1891, which again the British and the Manipuris fought the battle, though after 1826, Manipur got its lost territory, but as you know, the British made it a protectorate. Already, like you have seen in Chanchi, in all the rest of the country, in the princely kingdom, British would keep a small officer, what you call commissioner, or we in Manipuri, which is again a derivation of the Hindi, Boro Sahib or Soto Sahib, depending upon the position of the officer. And they tried to control the kingdom of Manipur from 1826 onwards. But this could not continue for very long. In 1891, a rebel took place and the Maitis fought. 
the last battle with the British, which we lost. Yet we knew that it will be lost, yet the spirit is what we need to celebrate and remember, for which we have all come together. Few things happened with this uh, event of 1891, politically, administratively, and culturally. And this is extremely important for the audience here to remember and also contemplate on the world. I'm saying contemplation because with the crisis that we are seeing today, we need to look back to the past, what happened, how things have saved, and perhaps how we have to look forward uh, the journey that we have to save for ourselves. The change that took place in the political domain was that Manipur, the people of Manipur was divided into two, two types of citizenship. One was the people of the valley, that is the Maitis, who were already mostly Hindus and mostly also other half is those who still followed what you call pre Vaishnava tradition of Sanamani religion. So, but these are amalgamated religious practice and they live side by side. There may be contradictions, conflict, yet they live together as one Maiti community. But these people of the valley, the Maitis were one particular kind of a subject. Contrast to this, the people of the hills, whom we call Nagas and Kukis. Now these names, Nagas and Kukis, were in fact given by the British. Because for them, if you look at the Naga tribe of today, you have, we all Maitis not know by Nagas some 20 years back. We all knew these people as Tanku, Kabui, Anal, Chiru, Monsang, Maram, Mao. This is what we know. It's community by their traditional indigenous names. But the British, and then what you call in the Kuki group, you have Thado. Again, Chiru also is called what is by the old Kuki. Then you have Paite, Simte, Gante. We all know Wi-Fi. We all know these by their indigenous names. And we were called Maitis by them. But unfortunately or fortunately, that is only the historians will tell, that three cluster names or four clusters name came to be known. One is the Maite. Second is the Naga, within which you put all these tribes because British don't want to break their head. So they say, okay, in terms of settlement, you call these people as Nagas, those who are better settled, long settlement you have in their household style, their cultivation style, you call them Nagas. Those who are moving, shifting cultivation you do, who came later, migrants, they call as Kuki. And there are, are also smaller communities of say 5,000, 10,000, 4,000 populations who does not want to be called within the Kuki or Naga unstructured, unclassified. So you can see that how the naming of the communities started with the British. And the subjects being divided, valley subject domestic and hill subjects, what they call Nagas and Kukis. And this divide of the populations and king was given the right to govern the Maitis and the British take over governance of the hill communities, Nagas and Kukis. This is one political major, what you call shift that we saw after 1891. The second political shift also was that Manipur for more than 2,000 years is governed, ruled by a dynasty called Ninthosa clan. But within the Ninthosa clan, there are two sub-clans called sub-dynasty, if you allow, Karta and Narasim. And if I am not mistaken, Oza Arkiranjan Singh comes in the Narasimha lineage of that dynasty. British was fought by the Kartas. So British dethroned the Karta dynasty and brought back the Narasimha dynasty from 1891. This was also another political sin you can see. In the administration, what has happened? That 
valley was left to the king of Manipur, but taxation was done by the British. It is very close to what you saw in Bengal after 1757 to subsequently when Palasi battle was lost, Mirza came, then Mirkasim came, and you can see that responsibility was given to the king. But without responsibility, all the resources and power was enjoyed by the British. And hills was left somehow under the control of the king, very limited control of the king over the hills. And what happened with this administrative changes? Culturally, hills were evangelized. Two sets of Protestant groups called Wales Presbyterian groups and the Baptist group almost straight to the entire hills of Manipur. But interestingly, the first community the British wanted to Christianize were the Maitis, which they failed. Petty Grew tried hard to make the Maitis Christians, but we were stalled by Snavas mostly and we resisted into that. And Petri Grew went up to the hills and this is how we started. There begins the divide. And most of the problem that you see today, Nagas, Gupis, Maitis are also played out in Though we say that it is ethnicity in the line, but there are undercurrents of what you call church playing a significant role in the country. Unfortunately, hope we overcome that. I am not saying this to fight it out, but I am saying this to understand and think for remedial measures. I am coming closer to the, my end of the talk. What has happened after that? The worst thing that has happened was in 1960 with what you call enactment of Manipur Land Revenue and Land Reform Act. And in 1960, Manipur was still a union territory or Parsi state, if I'm not mistaken. It was in 63 that it became a, a union territory. In 71, it became the state, full fledged state. In 1960, it was still a Parsi state. And the Land Act created a havoc which the people of Manipur even did not realize. What you saw today, a small valley area of around 8 to 9 percent, if you remove the what you call Loktak Lake, is inhabited by the majority Maitis along with other communities. But subsequently, hills were barred from Maitis moving up to the hills. This is after 1960s Act. Before that, there was free movement. We did not go up to the hills. That was a different issue. I jokingly say, when you are Vaisnavas, you always need water. Too much of water right from the morning. And that is why you don't want to go up to the hills. But in 1960, somehow, government of India, not the British, but the government of India, barred a section of the population, which is more than 50%, to go up and settle in the 90% land. This is a crazy thing that government of India has done, which the people of that time in Manipur could not realize. And this needs to be rethought and re-questioned. And I'm sure others will also join. Interestingly, with the no confidence motion that was raised recently against the Modi government, discussion on Manipur took place. Home Minister made a very remarkable substantive statements of the illegal migration that has created all the problems. So time has come for us now, particularly to the majority community called Maitis, to think further that we cannot let the state be divided on exclusive ethnic lines, neither in terms of settlement nor in terms of communities' activities. As a majority community, we have the responsibility, which we have always been. Maitis are, this community is not a small tribe. It is a conglomeration of communities. So we have a responsibility to take along everyone together, come across for agreement, discussions, dialogue, and that is open for us. I cannot go beyond this point. And I perhaps cross over my limit of time. And uh, uh, there are other experts who will come and discuss with you. This was only a point that I wanted to throw out. Now that the government of India has taken a position, 
Many may not like it. Many maitis may not like it that enough has not been said. Many cookies are unhappy because of the statement of the Home Minister. But let us state that this is the stain of the government of India. And in politics, it is all about negotiations. The impossibility has to be made possible. Everything that I want cannot be got. And finally, I must say that I belong to a particular community and faith. And which I believe that in Bhagavad, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the whole idea of Krishna is talking about Mahabharata is about destroying the evil and enhancing the greatness or the goodness. Now, let us not look at evil and the goodness in terms of ethnicity. The evil is in me. Evil is within our groups. What the Maitis have done to those two women is evil act. So is that rape, a, a continuous rape of the Maitis by the cookies, also is an evil act. So no particular in community is evil, no particular community is good. There is goodness in us, there is evil in us. Let us destroy the evil and enhance the goodness in us. And that, I believe, the majority community can begin. And let us take a place in front of the, our fallen martyrs that from today we will think towards that line. Thank you once again. Thank you.